Hi everyone, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm super excited to be with you today on this official green holiday. I'm lucky I can wear green pretty much every day, uh, my signature brand color. But uh, thank you for joining me uh, in this live from Atlanta, where I live. Um, and uh, as I said, I know some of you are watching from the UK and Europe and India and other parts of the world. So I hope everybody's had a great day or has a great day. Um, I'm very excited today. Uh, this is the official launch of my first of my Sugar In brands, uh, Nicholas Lodge brand products. And uh, so today is the launch of Flexi Paste. So this is a brand new paste. Um, and as I said, you're going to love it. And not only for flowers, but also other applications on cakes as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, things with the product and what makes it differentiates it between maybe other brands or other types of paste on the market. So first of all, uh, we are um, obviously working on the website, all right? So hopefully later today or tomorrow, uh, we will post the links. I'll be posting this on my Chef Nicholas Lodge and also Sugar and we'll be posting this as well. Uh, so you will be able to pre-order this. Now the orders were obviously the official launch today and we chose today because obviously being green, but uh, the uh, orders will start uh, shipping out on uh, Monday from sort of India uh, to the distributors in different parts of the world, like in the UK, uh, here in the US, but also uh, to uh, individuals in, uh, who are ordering from India as well. And um, so we've done the launch today uh, to obviously uh, launch the product. Um, and this is, as I said, one of uh, several pastes I'm working in developing with Sugar In, as well as some other uh, products as well, some dusting powders and other affiliated and associated products, especially with flour making. Um, so let's get started talking a little bit about the paste. Now, first of all, uh, when once the website, the Sugar In website has all of this information on, there will be live links. There is going to be a button there you can click with uh, frequently asked questions, okay? And then also just a little overview from my perspective of what this paste means to me and what obviously I use it for. Now, so I'm just gonna go through talking a little bit about the, um, the basically the FAQs, the frequently asked questions. So first of all, how does it come packaged? Um, this is the 400 gram pack, all right? I'm gonna come in with overhead camera as well. So this is the 400 gram pack, um, and uh, it's packed in this Mylar style bag, which Sugar In use for all of their products. It's a really great uh, packaging because it keeps the product very fresh because it's a thick product, has a wonderful seal. This is much better than using like a plastic baggie with a zip tie on it. And uh, when we uh, use the product, all right, so this is the 400 gram pack, um, and there's also a 200 gram pack, which of course is smaller. And um, so there, um, as I said, the two uh, sizes for obviously come in white, um, also come in the colors we're gonna talk about in a moment. So 200 gram packs, 400 gram packs, and then there's also a 1600 gram, okay, which contains four of the 400 gram packs. So those of you that are instructors or use a lot of paste, as I said, you know, that's obviously a little bit more economical way of buying it in a sort of bulk 1600 gram pack, okay? But anyway, so the, 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 this is sort of how it's packaged. Um, and the uh, sugar in paste, all right, so that's how it's packaged. The colors, again, will come in the, in the uh, various, obviously, sizes. So these are the three colors. So first of all, we have a foliage green. Now the foliage green is a sort of a beautiful green. And of course you can also make this darker green uh, by, for example, adding other sugar in, or for example, the amazing new Karen Portaleo paints that have just launched by sugar in. Um, so you could make that a darker green, but this is a perfect green. In, in my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, which is a sort of paid membership club through Katie Sue Designs. So with my Flower Pro Members Club, um, I use this uh, color a lot, all right? And in the last few weeks with some of the new current projects, like for example, the dogwood and the water lily and the lotus and things, I have used my uh, flexi paste green. Now, um, so the green can be colored uh, darker. Also, of course, you can take this and you can add it to the white. So just by mixing some white in with the green, you can make a paler green. And of course, you could also make it more of a limey green by adding yellow. Um, you can do, and I am planning on uh, on the website. Um, so uh, in a few weeks time, I'm gonna have a sort of a, like I suggested, like a guide, sort of like giving you some ideas of color combinations you can achieve using the colors. Now at the moment, we only have three colors and these will be, will be 
add into this. So we do have plans for some other colors a little later on. Um, so obviously you'll get updated with that as they become available. So that's the green. Um, this is the uh, peony pink, all right? So the peony pink is this really beautiful saturated pink color, all right? Which is obviously because peonies are this beautiful dark pink, but of course this also looks fabulous for roses and things as well. And what's really nice with the, um, with the pink especially, uh, because we use a lot of pink, whether you're making, for example, like cherry blossoms or you're making uh, other types of flowers. So you can take a little bit of your flexi paste and of course then you could just take a little bit of your pink. Now I, um, I also use these type of bags. So you can just find these like on Amazon, Mylar, so M-Y-L-A-R, same material that balloons are made from. And you can buy these online um, that have the clear front in them. So they get lots of different colors on the back. But these are actually wonderful to keep your mixed paste in. So if you're doing custom blended paste. Um, so see what I can then do is I can take just the tiniest amount of the pink. All right. Now this is, the thing I love about this is not as messy, you know, like using cupboards. So you put a little bit of pink. So if you were making, for example, like, uh, you know, cherry blossoms or things like that, you could just mix this through. And this is going to blend through to give you this really fabulous pink. Now, the other thing that I really love about these colors is especially pink. That's a problematic color with some brands in that it fades. This is, uh, as I said, is a no fade pink. And so when you are making like very pastel pink roses or blossoms like cherry blossoms, for example, this time of year, um, what's going to happen is you're going to get this really, really nice pink, but it's not going to bleed, bleed out and become like a white, you know, which happens all with a lot of brands of color. So very pigmented colors. So of course, you know, if you wanted it a little bit darker, you just add a little bit more of the color. So this is used in the base colors. So you see here I could go through. So for example, like when I teach roses um, in one of my classes here in Atlanta, um, you know, I'll typically use this sort of color pink, you know, so this is going to give you like a beautiful rose pink. All right. So very uh, good. And then, as I said, you can use these little bags. Uh, because these are really just like a mini version of the, um, obviously the, the ones that the product is in. Now, when you get the bag, obviously the bag is sealed here. Uh, this is kind of like a seal here. So all you do is just cut down the line there on the packaging and then just, uh, obviously put your, uh, put your, open your paste. But when you do is in these, but as I said, this just keeps the paste in excellent condition. Okay. Um, so really it's just like a mini version of the large bag that the product comes in. Okay. But as I said, you have this really great seal on here so it keeps everything nice and fresh and ready to go. So that's a little bit about the, the colors. And of course also we have the last color which is poppy red. Um, so the poppy red, you know, you can use this of course for poppies, for poinsettias at Christmas time. And again, this is not an easy color to reproduce in uh, obviously using colors, but of course it's often a lot of time messy. So this is wonderful. This comes pre-colored. Uh, in the bright red as well in the poppy. So we have pop poppy red, peony pink and foliage green. Okay. So those are the colors. And um, so then we move on to, is it an edible product? That's something, you know, I get asked a lot about even, you know, other types of paste like flower paste and gum paste. Are they edible? Yes, totally. Of course. And so the, the difference between the sugar in one is just because it is a starch based, primarily a starch based paste. Um, it is not as sweet as like, for example, um, regular gum paste or flour paste. So that also means that when you're using it on something like a cupcake or on a cookie, on an entremet and pastry, what it's nice is because it has a sort of very uh, neutral uh, flavor to it, it doesn't sort of overpower and it's not sort of overly sweet, especially on something like in my world of pastry, like using it on petit gâteau, on entremet cake and things like that. So it's really nice to use for lots of different applications. Um, the the thing is, it also has this uh, subtle um, sort of uh, overtone of, of floral. So it is a sort of lavender and rose, but very, very subtle. So you almost have this a bit like a sort of spa-like experience when you're making your flowers. You'll have this beautiful smell, just like sitting in an English garden making your flowers on a sunny afternoon. You have this nice sort of subtle smell of like English lavender and roses. And uh, that's also nice because when you are doing sugar flowers, if you steam the flowers, when you steam them, it also sort of emits that nice smell, that spa-like smell. So your flowers will actually have a nice fragrance as well. So it's a very sort of nice, uh, very subtle, but as I said, it has the undertones of the, of the lavender and the rose. 
and I'm just reading basically things from the FAQs that I've done. Um, it's a vegan product, 100% uh, suitable for vegan vegetarians, all right? Um, and uh, can it be rolled thin? Yes, thinner than any other commercial paste on the market. Um, now, so this is the product. So just to sort of show you a little bit of this, okay? So you take the product. Now the product density is similar to that of um, like sugar paste or rolled fondant. Okay, so you're just gonna, so you just will take this out. I normally condition my paste. I do this with traditional flour making as well. So this is just vegetable. It must be vegetable, not animal. So you don't want to use lard, but uh, vegetable fat, like in England, products like Trex, we use here in the US, like Crisco, which is a vegetable shortening. Uh, you can also use like a solid coconut oil as well, uh, but it wants to be a solid type of oil. It doesn't want to, just literally what I'm doing, is just gonna touch my finger on my paste. And especially for flour making, all right, um, this is the technique I use, but you're just gonna give that a little knead, all right? And then normally when I roll this out, I roll it out on corn flour or cornstarch, which I have in a little puff here, like so, and roll this out. You're gonna, now in my, um, in doing classes, I mostly use a pasta machine, so whenever I roll out things, if you watch my videos and things like that, I always use a pasta machine. But uh, pasta machine actually only goes down to number eight thickness. Now this paste was actually rolled out like five hours ago. All right, you see it's still sort of flexible. But you see, this is on a pasta machine. It's very thin, but as I said, that's the thinnest we can go on a pasta machine. But so the, with the, if you're using traditional flour making techniques, I'll just use a little bit of starch as needed. But just to sort of show you, you know, you literally can, roll this out so that you can, so you can actually sort of read through it. You see, so you can sort of totally, you know, like read through it and uh, see through it. So you see how, how thin the product is, all right? So you can roll it extremely, extremely thin. So now, as far as like use of this product, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as well. And, uh, so that is, uh, can be rolled very, very thin, all right? So that means if you're rolling it out by hand or with a pasta machine, you could go through to number eight, which is this thickness. And then, as I said, this was rolled out about five hours ago. Then I can still roll it out just even further with by hand, okay? So you can roll this, roll this out. Now, um, the product, as far as the product, how do you glue it together? Now, um, when I first started using the product, playing around with it, so for example, a typical flower that we uh, use, uh, make a lot in sugar is obviously like roses, all right? Um, and this is a lighter red. This is actually some of the red and white mixed. And, um, but when you make a flower like a rose, all right? So when we do traditional roses, normally I've always used egg white when I make sugar flowers to glue pe petals together. But particularly on a flower like this, all right, a rose or a gardenia or flower where you're sticking the layers to a cone or to a center, even something like I say around our calla lily, arum lilies as well. Um, when I tried using the product, all right, the flexi paste with regular egg white, which I've always used, and some people use edible glue. But what happens is, because the paste will stay flexible, what happens is the egg white or the glue, like by say the next day when you come to dust the flowers, what I found happened was when the uh, next day I came to say dust my roses or flowers like that, the egg white or the glue, because the petals, you're moving one part of it, it the glue or the egg white is gonna come un unhinged, all right, so it's gonna come unstuck. And so what I've developed is a special glue. Now, again, this will be on the website. So when the website goes live, you'll be able to download this, but also you can find this on my uh, nicholaslodge.com website. So if you go to nicholaslodge.com and then if you click on templates and recipes or so recipes and templates, uh, there you're just gonna scroll down and you'll see flexi paste. And then there is a PDF of the recipe you can download. This will also be on the website, the Sugar In website as well. And then also these frequently asked questions. And as I said, my overview of the product, all right? Now there's also a link there to a YouTube video. So I do have a YouTube on my YouTube channel and that actually shows you how to make the flexi paste. All right, and the flexi paste, uh, this is the product here. And what it is, it's a uh, glue made from the actual product, all right? And uh, you can see it's sort of white, looks almost a little bit like milk, all right? But it's, th it's thicker. Um, this is a shelf stable product, so you don't have to refrigerate this. And really all you're gonna do is you're gonna take some of the flexi paste, 
put some hot water, a little bit of hot water into it, you make a roux, just like think of cooking and making a bechamel sauce or a sort of gravy. You're adding basically, you're adding water to your starch-based product, you're making a roux, then you add more water to it, you microwave it and you strain it. And as I said, this will last, or this is the recipe, this will last a long, long time, all right? And uh, so this glue will stay flexible. So when you actually attach petals, so especially when you're doing this on flowers like roses, or you're making bow loops, or you're making uh, bows, or attaching like drapes and things to a cake, you would use this product to attach, all right? Um, so I developed this, and as I said, it works really, really well. Um, I keep my glue in a little pot here. I have a little hole in here, and this is a little little rubber stopper so then you know when I'm using this with a paintbrush I just put my paintbrush in there and I can brush the edge of the uh, of the edge of that with my paintbrush so like when I'm making flower making then you see I just put that in and I'm just going to use the edge there brush that onto my petal or I dip my wire into there use that to take off the excess and then just at the end of the day I would just give that a little wipe and I just put that on little stopper back inside there and you see that keeps my glue in perfect condition and uh, as I said that's sort of the uh, easy glue all right so recipe is on the um, as I said nicholaslodge.com under recipes and templates um, and that has a link to as I said the uh, the video as well the YouTube video and of course the plan is that I will be adding more videos as well using the product all right so so that's sort of how you glue it together and as I said, so, and then of course, if you're doing this, uh, you can use this for bows. Also when you're dressing figures, because this is fabulous for, uh, if you do figure modeling to make like dresses and clothes, and because of the flexibility of the product, you know, that's often an issue with using sometimes other paste and they dry too quickly. So the lot fabulous thing about this is you have plenty of work in time, you see? So if you were doing, um, let's say, you know, I mean, I'm just showing you here on a little small cake, but if you were doing a cake, like a, say a three tier wedding cake, and you wanted like paste drape down there you see you can take the you can just literally just like drape this you think of it a little bit like tissue paper and you can just open it out so if you want to create like fabric but you can use this to create as I said but as I said remember this has been rolled out five hours all right so the nice thing about this product is that you can use this and then you see literally I can just re-smooth that and then I could reuse that, you see? So those of you that are flower makers, the wonderful thing about this is you have plenty of time, you know. Again, in my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, um, you know, a lot of my members are sort of fairly new to flower making, and some of them have crossed over from craft. Um, so, you know, where they're using polymer clays and air drying clay, which obviously is a product you, again, don't have an issue so much with drying too quickly. But the thing typically with a lot of uh, flower paste is that they do dry pretty quickly, all right? Now, this product, product um, will stay flexible uh, for at least three weeks, all right, meaning it's going to happen, but in fact it will go a lot for longer than that. All right, so this actual, uh, this sample here was actually, um, this sample was rolled out on February the 5th, and you see how the paste has still got a lot of flexibility in it, all right, yet it holds its shape. And that's what's really wonderful about the product. Like in, if a lot of paste, if you did them like this thin, but see here, literally you could scrunch this up but you could also do that on a cake and it will hold, it has a lot of structural integrity um, because many brands of paste, what happens is when you roll them out thin, they lose their structural integrity, which means it starts to break down. Um, so you won't ever have any issues with, uh, you know, with this, but, but when you're making, uh, for example, like for a cake, all right, so when you're doing a, for example, for a cake, a uh, nice thing about this is when you make, um, so this was made, for example, um, in the Katie Sue chain mold, all right? So let's say, for example, you have a client who wants a Chanel purse and you wanna do the sort of classic gold Chanel chain, all right? So the great thing about this, now again, this was done last night, all right? And you see how it's still lovely and flexible. You see how I can bend this like a snake? All right, so what I could do is you could do this, take this out, let it dry a little bit, you could paint this gold, and then once you've got your cake made, you literally just take this and you can then just sort of drape your chain however you want this to go uh, on the cake. But you see, literally, as I said, you know, you can... So you see, that just shows you a little bit of the structural integrity of the product that you could actually, you know, like, could almost make knots and things in it. So, you know, for a lot of application on cake, that's a very useful feature. 
This, for example, bow, again, I made this last night. So again, if you're doing a Tiffany box cake, for example, a Tiffany package cake, you know, the Tiffany classic Tiffany blue, you could make your bow out of this product. You know, you can make that like the day before. And then once you get your sort of your ribbons on your cake, you then would just take this. And again, you can just put this on and you see like this was made last night. So what I can do is then you can see I can actually do my pleats and I can just do however you want this to sort of sit on the cake, you see? And then of course, you know, if you were going to attach that, like if I wanted the bow to stay like this, all right, what I would do then is I just take a little bit of my flexi glue, put a touch under there, and it will just stay there. You see, it won't collapse. So this, as I said, is a really wonderful product, as I said, not just for flowers, but also for cakes as well. All right, so those of you that do cakes. But um, when you do uh, things like plead in with it, you know, so remember I said, this has been rolled out five hours. You see, you can actually, when you make like pleats to go, like if you're doing figures, you can use this, for example, for, you know, like dressing a figure, but you can imagine then you're doing like figures and things like that, just so you have this really wonderful, flexible paste, all right? Um, now for flower making, as I said, so that means when you're making flowers, uh, like uh, say this is a David Austin rose, but you see how this paste, now this was actually made over three months ago, but you see how I've still got flexibility there in the petals, okay? But also, especially the problematic flowers we make a lot in sugar would be things like a Gerber daisy, gardenias, you know, anything that has these sort of suspended petals. So like, especially the daisy family is very problematic uh, to uh, break in very easily because again, most of the, you know, homemade or commercial uh, flower paste on the market really don't, uh, dry quite hard, all right? So especially for flowers, more so for like flowers like Gerber daisies, gardenias, daisy family, uh, flowers like that, the advantage of this product is that your um, flowers will still have um, obviously, you know, flexibility, all right? So you've still got flexibility in here. Um, and uh, so this is after seven, seven months, all right? So it's never, then the pace is never gonna get sort of hard, hard, all right? We'll always have flexibility. So when we think about like, for example, putting together a sugar flower, all right? When we think about also uh, putting flowers onto a cake, either before the wedding or on site at the wedding, that can sometimes be a little bit dramatic where you have problems with breakages because when a petal hits another petal, a lot of times when the paste is uh, brittle, it's just gonna snap, all right? Um, but also the other thing is transportation. You know, I transport a lot of sugar flowers all over the world for classes, for displays and things like that. So I think of this a little bit like I work in an air drying clay um, by Katie Sue called Hardy Clay. And so in my Flower Pro Members Club, I do a lot of projects with air drying clay and also with, um, with sugar. All right, so the thing is, is that I, I really compare this almost to like an edible version of an air drying clay or a cold porcelain, okay? So it's still edible in the fact that you can eat the product, but as I said, that it has that same sort of workability in that you have plenty of working time, but also that you, uh, it stays, as I said, um, perfect in shape. Um, but also that it never gets brittle. The other thing I found is you can put this in the fridge, all right? Um, um, I've tried experimenting, I put these outside, you know, this weekend it was like over 30 degrees C, like 86 in Atlanta, so I just put the flowers outside they were perfectly okay, all right? There wasn't any problem with them collapsing. Um, also, I've put the flowers in the fridge, all right? So that also means if you were doing a wedding cake, like here in the US, most of our wedding cakes are sponge cake, and of course, a lot of them have like Swiss meringue uh, buttercream and things on them, so it would have to be refrigerated. So that's also been an issue with a sugar-based paste. It's sugar is hydroscopic, which means it pulls moisture in from the atmosphere. So I would never have basically recommended you put sugar flowers onto a wedding cake and then put them in the fridge. But this has been fine. I had flowers in the fridge overnight and they were perfectly okay, all right? So, so it's good for that type of application as well. Um, and then, but as I said, when you're doing, uh, you know, flexibility, so, you know, for example, this is a project I have with my Flower Pro Members Club for next month, this ward lily. So it also has a beautiful translucency as well, um, but the, the petals still, still stay flexible, you see? So these flexible, so these were actually made two months ago, these petals with the flexi paste, all right? Um, so you can just sort of see the, um, the, the product in actual things. And like, for example, here, this is uh, another project from my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club. This is the Magnolia Grandiflora, the Southern Magnolia, which is nearly the size of my face size, all right? So there's a big, big magnolia there. And, um, but uh, again, this was used for the dogwood petal, but you see how the dogwood petals, I can actually, 
all right? And these were made like two weeks ago, but you see they're still flexible. Um, but also that means that though these dogwood petals were wired, like the water lily, if you made a traditional dogwood, which is made in, a lot of people just use like a dogwood shape cutter, and you made this, this is again would mean that your pace would stay flexible. Um, so here you can see this is actually like the little small, uh, the small dogwood flower, but you see how this is, as it's been over a week, but you see this is attached. And of course, being attached with the uh, flexi glue means that your egg white doesn't give way, all right? So this is a good example. If I had used egg white to glue this outer flower to the center, what would happen is a lot of times it would just, if you did that, the petal would break, but also if it didn't break, it would also detach away from the egg white. Um, the other thing that it's really good for is like intricate foliage. So for example, again, I'm just showing you some projects from my um, Ultimate Members Club because these are good where I teach my... So when you're doing more intricate leaves, like this is my uh, Flower Pro by Katie Sue Design Wedding Foliage Mold. So this is the Dusty Miller. Okay, so Dusty Miller is quite an intricate leaf. So when we think about foliage like ranunculus and certain other, but you see it's quite a delicate, uh, delicate leaf. And so again, using the uh, flexi paste here, you see this is still has flexibility to it and this was actually made this was actually made in october last year all right because part of my winter white uh, but again you know it leaves here like the um, anemone leaves ranunculus leaves any of those type of products uh, also when you think about calyxes something that's very problematic in teaching roses with a traditional um, like flower paste or gum paste is what happens a lot of times with roses. I'm sure everybody's experienced that when you go to sort of put the flower together, you know, color the dust of flower or put it together, sometimes you're gonna break the calyx very easy. The calyx will actually again stay flexible um, on the rose, all right? And especially if you were doing say like a wired rose and then add in um, calyx to it afterwards, the whole thing is gonna stay flexible, all right? So very, very useful, um, as I said, uh, issue from, a, obviously qualities and properties with it. And uh, so then it talks in here that when you remove from the pack, what you do is, you know, so I showed you that you remove, you touch your finger on a container of vegetable based fat, shortening solid coconut oil, what I refer to as conditioning the paste. And that's something I always do whenever, especially I'm doing flower making, not so important for things like bows or anything like that, but typically whenever I'm doing flowers, I just touch my finger. You don't need a lot, all right? And you put that into it. now. Obviously flexi paste is just like um, sugar paste, rolled fondant, like gum paste, flour paste, all right, any pastillage, any of those products, you know, when we roll it out, the product is exposed to the air, okay? So you obviously, let's say you're making roses, you roll your paste out, you see, again, see I can just literally just take that paste. So you see that was all scrunched up. And now you see I can just flatten that out. So after being rolled out five hours, or actually five and a half hours now, I could take this, I could cut out my rose and obviously make my rose petals, all right? So you take your, but sometimes with paste, you know, once you do that several times, you're almost like taking what's left, you cut out your blossom shape, let's say for your roses, you have your paste that's left, all right? So you take that, you scrunch it back up, you put it in the bag. So if you do that two or three times, the paste is of course gonna start to toughen a little bit, just like it does on flower paste. So for example, when I'm teaching traditional flower making using regular flower paste or gum paste, what I do there is um, in those type of paste, I generally add a little bit of fresh egg white. And what that does, it sort of resurrects the paste and brings it back to the, I have a nice malleability and elasticity. But uh, with this paste, all you do is you add a little bit of water, okay? So um, as I said, when you take the product, all right, so if you have the product, so you've had some, you've rolled it out, and then as I said, it starts to feel a little bit firm, what you do there, just take a little uh, bowl of water, all right? You just dip the paste into water. Alternatively, you can just take a fine spray bottle. Obviously, these don't have to be green. All right, add a little bit of water to it, and you're just gonna mix this through the paste, all right? And you're just gonna just work this through the paste. And what that's gonna do, it's going to really almost like put moisture back into the product, all right? So just like being out in the sun, your skin dries out, we add moisturizer to it. So you're just gonna add, and that will obviously bring everything back to a nice consistency. All right, so you just add water because also that keeps it totally vegan as well, all right? So the product, because obviously, and you wouldn't use egg white in this because it is a said that you just need to use water and that will just basically bring it back to life. And of course you can add whatever water you want to add to that, okay? Um, and that is, is the product, but it has a lovely stretch on it. Um, but as I said, you know, so many amazing properties with the product in that you can just literally leave it out. You don't have that sort of urgency to have to do something on a more intricate flowers. 
means you have plenty of working time to be able to sort of get the pedals in the place you want them to be. How long will it last? So Flexi Paste has a 15 month shelf life. So when manufactured um, by obviously government rules worldwide, you know, like obviously there's always going to be a sell by or use by date on any food based product, but there's nothing in here that's going to go bad. So even after this is best before date or expiration date, it's still going to be perfectly okay. All right. Um, because unlike a lot of food products, obviously there's nothing in here, you know, like sugar paste is a good example, rolled fondant. You know, it's gonna, to me, that's gonna be fine like a year after the date it has on the packaging. It's still gonna be perfectly okay. Um, so as I said, so obviously a 13 month, a 15 month shelf life. Um, if you're using a large amount, do you do anything different? So if you, I've said it, if you're say you're making a lot of flowers, bows, etc. Now the other option you can do is if you were gonna do a large, and especially if you're gonna color this. So let's say you're wanting to take some paste, you wanna take some paste like, for example, this amount, and you want to color this uh, with some, um, you know, like for example, Karen Bordelio's paints or some other, you know, sugar in product or a gel product, whatever. The other thing you can do is take this out. You can put this into a zip top bag and you can just pop this in the microwave for five to 10 seconds. All right. And that is going to soften it. So if you're needing a large amount of the paste, all right, um, you can do that. Just microwave this five or 10 seconds in a plastic bag or plastic wrap or right, cling film. And then you open it up, add some vegetable shortening and then color as desired. And of course, um, you could also add a little bit of water if you wanted to. All right, so this is made, um, it's not made too soft because the other issue I have is a lot of my students sometimes have hot sticky hands, all right? Also, of course, some of you, like here in Atlanta, obviously we have a very hot, humid summers and like we've already, as I said, into spring and things. But uh, of course we're working in air conditioning all the time. But in the pastry field, I work with a lot of pastry chefs at resort hotels all over the world who are sometimes working in the kitchen with no AC. And so this works, as I said, it has a nice sort of density in that it works really well in that environment. But as I said, you know, has all those other properties to it. Um, and, uh, but remember you can make it softer yourself just by adding a little bit of water as needed um, based on, you know, if you have very dry hands, all right, or if you have hot sticky hands, you probably prefer it on a little bit of the as straight out of the pack products. How long does it take to dry? It depends on the size, thickness, and ambient temperature and humidity. So humidity level is obviously a very important factor, but it really, after about two hours, you'll be able to color the flour because it never really dries completely. So unlike again, traditional flour making where you'd make say petals out of flour paste or gum paste, then you have to let them dry and then you assemble them once they're dry. This product, you pretty much can uh, like after two hours, you know, so like the dogwood petals, as I said, you know, these were made a as I said, a couple of weeks ago, and so they're still flexible. But literally, as I said, after about an hour, 90 minutes, I could take these, I could dust them and assemble them to make my dogwood without any issues whatsoever. Um, so really, as I said, uh, uh, easy to, to use. And so good also for, as I said, if you're in a time restraint, because literally if you're making a rose, you could have, you know, have whip up a rose and you could basically dust it like 30 minutes later. And uh, as I said, there's not any worry there about uh, if collapsing or anything like that. And uh, so is it suitable for high humidity, you know, designed to work in all climatic conditions, including high humidities. And as I said, I've talked about that, it's not as hydroscopic as um, obviously traditional sugar-based pastes, all right? Um, so, so that's, uh, as I said, uh, just a little overview um, of, of the product, all right? And uh, as I said, you know, I call it flexi paste because to me that's what it is, is a flexible paste, all right, that stays flexible. Um, and as I said, I hope you will love this product. Um, use it for flower making and as I said, for all different other applications. Uh, just remember, as I said, we are, this is just the official launch day today. So we are gonna be setting up a, uh, obviously a website. Uh, and then as I said, I will be, of course, um, be posting videos and different things um, over the coming weeks and months of obviously using it for different projects. Um, so whether you're a cake artist, a cookie artist, you know, pastry chef, um, as I said, a sugar flower artist, uh, hopefully you'll give uh, Flexi Paste a try and uh, we'll love it. We look forward to hearing everybody's feedback on the product and uh, stay safe everybody. And as I said, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, until next time, Sweet Wishes has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Bye everybody.